What's going on Chemical Guys family? Today we're going over what I promised in the last video. We have my brother's Thunderbird in the shop and we recently took off the bra and that showed you the years of oxidation that have accumulated on the rest of the vehicle, but all the dirt that was hiding underneath there scratching up the paint. So today we're gonna show you how to properly decontaminate the finish and also polish it to restore that shine. And we're also gonna be showing you guys how to use a clay bar, but also how to use a rotary. To start off, we have our medium clay bar here, which we've kneaded up into a small patty. And this is gonna cover two to three fingers, depending on the size of your hand. And we're going to spray down our hand and the bar, as well as the surface using some clay luber. And gently work it back and forth. And what this is doing is it extracts the contamination that's stuck in the pores of the paint. Because a car like this that sat outside for years, underneath a tree, it's collected tree sap and fallout and all kinds of grime. You can see that brown runoff is all the dirt coming out. And at first it's gonna feel kind of rough or it's gonna sound rough, but as you pull more contamination out, it's gonna get smoother or it's gonna get slicker and the bar is gonna glide across the surface. And that's when you know when to move on. A lot of people ask me, how many bars do you need to do one car or how often do you need to replace it? Typically on a vehicle, you should be able to get at least, a vehicle this size at least, you probably clay it about 12 to 13 times depending on the condition of the paint. So this car is fairly rough, it's very dirty. You can see all the brown that's in the clay bar already. So this bar is probably gonna need to be replaced pretty soon uh, rather than your average vehicle. But what you do is you knead it up and roll it to a new side. And that's how you know when you need to replace it. So basically the more you roll it, you're gonna get a fresh side. But as you collect dirt, obviously it's going to get stuck in there somewhere. So once you see the line or you have nowhere else to roll it to, that's when you need to replace it or if you drop it, because this is like a piece of gum, if you drop it on the ground, it collects all the rocks, all the dirt from the floor. And if you put that back on your paint, it's gonna mar it and scratch it very easily. So that's when you need to replace it. That's why I recommend taking your bar and then cutting it into pieces so that you have a fresh piece in case you do drop it. But also you don't need the entire bar when you're claying one vehicle. Just continuing the same process. You can also use this on anything that's painted glossy, shiny, or clear. This doesn't remove scratches or swirls, but what this is doing is it's just gonna pull out the junk that's in the pores of the paint, which gives your car a rough look or a rough feel. And this is something you guys can check if you need to do just by going outside and running your hand against the vehicle after you wash it. If it feels rough or sounds rough, it needs to be clayed. But this is also a necessary step when you're going to polish the vehicle because you wanna get as much of the junk out before you do your polishing because that's gonna clot up your pad or contaminate the pad so as much of the junk off the surface will help you get the best results. This way you're not grinding any kind of material back into the finish. And it's also not going to fill your pad with dirt. So you can see just roll it as necessary. This way you're not getting that browning effect all over the vehicle. Because again, you're pulling out years of contamination, or at least I am on this kind of vehicle. So you're probably going to need to roll it more often than you would on a regularly detailed vehicle but that's why we're using the medium one, which has more of a denser finish, so you can pull out more of the deeper stuff. So I'm gonna continue this process on the rest of the vehicle, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to properly polish it because we have scratches, swirls, oxidation, and some kind of funky little yellowing on the bumper here, which could be caused by years of staining. Who knows what it is, but we're gonna show you how to remove it to revive that shine. So we've just finished clay bar in the vehicle and now it's got that really smooth finish and it's also prepared it for the next step which is going to be polishing. And we're just going to introduce you guys to our Torque R rotary polisher which is going to cut through heavy defects very quickly. So this is going to be the tutorial of how to use your brand new rotary. Uh, from right off the bat here this comes standard with a 5 inch backing plate which has a flexible urethane edge here which helps you to go for contours as well as any kind of bends or different shapes of the vehicle. I've attached one of our orange Hexologic pads, which is our go-to combination for any kind of polishing job. You see here we have this very smooth, elegant design here, which is very easy to hold, very lightweight as composed or as compared to other kind of rotary polishers. But also it has no trigger, so this reduces fatigue as you're polishing. On top here you have a digital screen here that reads out the speed that you're in. 
and also have your on off switch which is an easy to reach area in case you need to shut it off quickly and when you do shut it off it centers it back down to zero so you're not kicking it on or having any kind of fling when you turn the machine on so now we're going to set it up with some of our v34 hybrid compound which is going to cut through the oxidation scratches swirls marring that was on the vehicle and then we're going to add a little bit of pack conditioner which helps to moisten the pad and also preps it to kind of reduce some of that friction because this is a rotary polisher which means it only spins in one direction or on one axis which creates heat in one generalized or one central area. Typically it's right here in the center which is why we remove the center of the pad on the HexLogic quantum pads and this is going to help reduce the burning uh, possibility or, or the excess heat and friction that's caused by polishing. This is also going to help reduce some of the dusting, but what you want to do is periodically come back and spray your pad just to keep it moistened. This is going to help it last as long as possible. But before we begin, I'm going to show you a couple techniques here. What I like to do is I'll center from the center and work my way out. But before you place the rotary machine on the vehicle that you're working on, you want to make sure that it's already spinning. You want to use probably the lowest speed setting to spread out your compound or polish that you're working with, and then bump it up to probably the third or fourth speed setting to actually work it in until it goes clear. You want to make sure that you're not putting too much pressure down because that creates a lot of friction and a lot of heat which can damage the vehicle's paintwork. But also you want to make sure that you're not dipping or diving one way or the other or forward or backwards. So what I like to do is I'll just place my hand with the weight of my hand only. That's what's going to control the side to side motion. And then back here I'll put my hand gently across this on the center here. And this is going to keep me from diving side to side or too much back and forth. But what you want to do is move about an inch per second. That's going to be your arm speed which means that your pad should be moving about this fast and you want to use an overlapping pattern or a cross hatching pattern to make sure that you're moving even an amount of clear coat and getting the best results. So with that being said let's get started by setting up the pad with our V34 and some of the pad conditioner. V34 is our hybrid compound as I had mentioned and this cuts through deep defects and scratches and swirls oxidation like this vehicle has because I've mentioned this car has been sitting outside for a long time underneath the tree and that means it's got a lot of fallout and tree sap and all kinds of imperfections. So we're going to show you how to properly remove it using the rotary. But you only want to use about a dime size or a hex size amount of product for about a two foot by two foot section. And then some of our pad conditioner which moistens the pad and helps reduce that friction. We'll start by dabbing it out on the vehicle. That's about two feet by two feet. And then on the lowest speed setting, we'll start spreading it. And then we'll do about 1200 or 1500. That's the speed setting that we're going to use to really break it down and diminish it until it goes about clear or translucent. Then we can wipe it off and check our work. So now that our compound has gone basically clear, we're going to take a clean microfiber towel and wipe off the excess, and then we can check our work. And already we've got a lot of the oxidation removed and starting to restore some of that gloss. It feels really slick because now it's got a fresh layer of clear coat, or it's an exposed fresh layer of clear coat. And then we can repeat the same process over the rest of the hood as well as the rest of the vehicle to one, even out the gloss between the side that had the bra on it to now the oxidized side, but also to restore the shine on the rest of the vehicle. As you saw, the rotary cuts very quickly, but it also diminishes the product that you're using very quickly as well because it only spins on one axis and it spins at a very high rate of speed. And this quickly diminishes your scratches and swirls while also reviving your clear coat and showing off that fresh layer. After polishing this section using V34 with the rotary polisher, we moved a lot of the scratches and swirls, restored a lot of the shine, but more importantly, I'm trying to remove this oxidation or the stain that was left behind from the clear bra or whatever was trapped underneath it. Remove the tape to show you guys the before and after. 
I also have to keep correcting myself. It wasn't a clear bra, it was a love bra. So we've just finished polishing off this Thunderbird and already can see there's a beautiful shine that's been restored to this because the Torque R rotary polisher removed a fine layer of that clear coat that had the oxidation, the scratches and swirls to reveal a fresh, even finish. And this is going to give you that clarity while also enhancing the gloss of your vehicle. Just to recap the Torque R for those of you who are new to the polishing game, this is a rotary polisher which means it rotates on one axis. So you need to keep it moving constantly so you don't increase the heat in one central area which could possibly burn the paint or mar it or damage it. Also, as you work your way down here, you see that you have the digital screen here, the on-off switch, which is an easy place to reach. This gives you your variable speeds, no triggers, so it's not going to cause fatigue as you polish. But like I mentioned before, you want to make sure that the pad and the machine itself is aligned and flat as you work across the vehicle. I know this is kind of difficult to do on the side of the vehicle because you tend to dip or as you're trying to show or look at what you're working on, you kind of move to one side too much. But try to keep it nice and flat. This way you're keeping the pad flat, which makes sure that it's not going to create a hot spot on the edge of the pad, which could again burn it or cause marring or what's called tiger striping, where you see that white haze across the vehicle. This way you're removing the same amount of clear coat as you polish. So now that the car is nice and clean, it's all been you know revived. Now we want to protect it. Put this down for a second. And we're going to use Hydro Charge, which is one of our brand new ceramic coatings. Basically all I have to do is spray it onto an applicator. and then spread it out on the vehicle. You'll see just a very little bit goes a long way. And this is going to repel harmful UV rays that create oxidation or staining or discoloring. This also helps give your car some hydrophobic properties, which helps the water to sheet right off while it also enhances gloss. And you can put this on any color gloss vehicle. Really easy to apply. A lot of people are afraid to apply ceramic coatings because they're worried about how uneven it could come out or if it doesn't heal or cure properly. So this is real simple to do, just using a microfiber applicator pad. We're spreading it out in an even coat using the same cross hatching pattern to ensure that there's no high spots or areas that we may have missed. And then you can always go back over and an alternating direction to make sure that, again, it's completely covered, giving you uniform shine and protection. So guys, this only takes a couple minutes to cure to the surface, so by the time I'm done coating the entire hood, it'll be time to come back to this side and buff away the excess. But in the meantime, you guys can check out these products on our website, chemicalguys.com or at your local detail garage. If you liked today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, show some love for the Thunderbird and American Classic by giving it a thumbs up and dropping your comments down below, and we'll see you guys next time.